Hi everyone, Sajid Amit here and welcome to the first part, the first episode of the Reflection Series. The Reflection Series is not going to be as philosophical as it sounds. It's going to be essentially product discussions, but I will be talking about products that I've owned in the past as well. Because a lot of products have passed my hands that I've not done review of. As a matter of fact, I would say hundreds of products have passed my hands that I've not reviewed. And these include like very impressive DAX, from the Core Dave to the Denifrips DAX to the Hall Audio May. These include a lot of impressive headphones like the Biz AB1266 5TC, which I've owned for two years, never reviewed, the RAL requisite SR1A, and a whole bunch of other stuff, guys. So welcome to the first part of the Reflection series. I'm starting with the BIS AB1266 Phi TC. I'll be calling it TC in short, henceforth. TC stands for Total Consciousness. So, I mean, just to kick off the series, you get a flavor of what the series will be about. The TC is a headphone that I've heard many times before I decided to buy it because the first time I heard the TC, I was not a fan. I thought that the mid-range was dry as a Sahara desert. I thought that the treble was glary and digital and sharp and uneven. And I mean, I thought the upper mids were very recessed, like, you know, several dB on the graph, not to suggest that the graph exactly mirrors what you might hear. The bass was super impressive. The soundstage width and layering and how far the soundstage extended from outside of your head was just top class, top notch, phenomenal. Imaging was world class. So those pros or positive attributes of the TC did make me want to keep auditioning the TC in case I felt you know differently about them. So I auditioned it once at first uh, at a friend's house. Didn't like it. I dropped an impression on Head Fight, the Facebook group that you can look up, I'm sure, using my name, Sajid Ahmed, where I did an AB between the Susvara and the TC, and the Susvara came on top, but decidedly and all that. Second audition, I liked the TC more. The third edition is basically what made me want to buy the TC, and that was because of the chain driving. The chain is critical, guys. So those of you who have heard this sort of mantra that the chain does not matter, I'm sorry to say, and I don't want to sound like an elitist, um, but there's a lot of elite shaming or in the hobby or, or rich shaming in the hobby, which I think is unfair and uncalled for. So... Chains do matter, guys. And what I find is that people who have not spent a whole lot of money on chains tend to stay away from this perspective that chains matter. And what I find is that people who invest in like, you know, cheap topping products, etc., and and just go by measurements because measurements can fill you with a sense of security that the outside universe of other electronic devices is just a bit too monstrous and a bit too, you know, filled with like shills and filled with like, you know, people who are trying to browse, uh, price gauge, etc. However, chains do matter. And as you spend more and more money on the chain and not just spend blindly, but, you know, spend intelligently, you do start getting magic with your headphones that you might not have previously. And you might end up liking headphones that you might not have previously. So even for a $6,000 abyss, chains matter. You can come back to them and say that's an un... That's just not a very desirable trait in a headphone that's so expensive. You might just come and say, if you're paying $6,000 for a headphone, why would you have to care about the chain? And you'd be right in asserting that. That is your right as a customer, as an individual, to hold a company to account for not making a headphone that you like or that is more palatable for a wider audience given what they're charging. That's your right. That's your opinion. I personally find that even with expensive headphones like the TC, if you happen to sort of enjoy tweaking with the source, with the DAC, with the streamer, with the amp, with the cable, it is a dimension of the hobby. And I know it's super expensive. So if that's not something you want to do, that's understandable. But there are people who want to get into all that because there are people who are tweakers. There are people who perhaps don't mind spending the money, maybe because they're older and have more savings or what have you. But whatever the case may be, it is a dimension of the hobby that you can enjoy with the TC or can just frustrate you with the TC. So it's a double-edged sword. I did enjoy it when the TC was with me. So I finally found the Hollow Audio Maydac, which I'll be dropping reflection video on. And the Maydac is just very warm and analog sounding. It enhances whatever the TC is good at and it sort of fills up or makes up for what the TC was poor at, such as mid-range. It was an amazing experience with the Hollow Audio Maydac. And I tried the TC because it's slightly difficult to drive with like high-end speaker amps, which I don't advise you to do. 
because you can blow out your headphones if you don't, you know, dial in the volume correctly. I tried an AccuPhase, a $12,000 AccuPhase speaker amp with the bass, which is also more analog sounding, and the bass sounded just blissful. So I bought the bass. However, if you don't want to spend this insane amount of money on an AccuPhase speaker amp, which I advise against anyway, a cheaper amp that really brings the bass to life is the iFi Pro iCan Signature Edition. And even without the tube mode, the iFi house sound is a bit warm. It's a bit thick and it's a bit mid-range forward. So it corrects the mid-range recession of the bass. It really does and it works better than EQ. I mean, EQ has its limits. I, don't, I haven't yet been able to fix a headphone with EQ. And EQ is not rocket science, so please don't think you're very smart because you use EQ. I am a math miner from Dartmouth. I'm not sort of tooting my own horn, but all just to say, please don't think I'm an idiot who can't use an EQ. EQ so far for me has only worked out with certain devices like the Sony W1ZM2 and most others. It hasn't really fixed the Suzvara's bass, for example, like I keep talking about. So it won't fix the bass mid-range with EQ, right? I mean, you might get slightly more forwardness by, you know, pushing it up a few dB and by playing around <clears throat> with the gradient of the EQ. However, I think overall, the Pro iFi signature, real Pro iCan signature, really fixed the TC's mid range for me. It made it more lush. It brought it out a bit more, more forward. It made the TC presentation slightly thicker. And somehow the treble also became more palatable and the overall experience became sweeter and enjoyable. But I do have to say the whole audio Maydac and the Pro iCan signature together had this effect on the TC. So it fixed the TC. There is a super expensive. $8,000 that goes up all the way to $12,000 and $15,000 tube amplifier, the Wu Audio Wa33 that is magical with the TC, I've heard it. And I'll be dropping a reflections video on the Wa33 as well later on, so stay tuned for, to this channel, subscribe if you have not. But there are source tweaks in sum, in summary, that you can deploy to make the TC more wonderful. And it's a lot of money, but it's been worth it for a lot of people. So take that for what it's worth to you. TC overall is a highly resolving headphone. And I do want to go out on a limb and say it's more resolving than a Suzvara. I know a lot of people come back and say Suzvara presents details in a more laid back way and all that. And I get all that. Having considered Suzvara's different way of presenting detail, I still think the TC is more resolving than Suzvara. There are more resolving headphones in the TC, don't get me wrong, especially the Royal Requisite SR1A, which I'll be dropping Reflections video of, so stay, stay tuned and subscribe to this channel. The only reason I'm calling out for subscribers is that I've not done this in the past. I usually just, I'm very matter of fact with my reviews. I do a review and I just switch off. But subscribers help, so hope you can help out the channel that way. The TC is an amazing headphone. It's also very, very heavy, so that's worth keeping in mind. I suffer from neck pains. I'm not gonna go out on a limb and on video connect my neck pain with the TC. I'm not going to do that, but I do suffer from neck pain, so I stay away from the TC nowadays. So take that for what you will. It's a very heavy headphone. It's about 700 grams. The fit is cumbersome for a lot of people. It's, it, it's not for a lot of people, but you can swivel out the headband mechanism. You can make the cups protrude outwards, which gives you more sound stage and less bass. So you can, you can tweak the bass, but it is an amazing headphone and it would make my top five headphone of all time very easily it's a unique headphone no other headphone does bass like this perhaps with the exception of the lcd4 but perhaps no other headphone combines staging and bass the way the tc does so these are i think the party tricks of the tc it's an amazing headphone with some strong cons that you might want to consider if you want to buy it so that's it for the reflections video guys so this is basically what reflections videos will sound like and look like it will be me doing a commentary on a headphone or a DAC or an amplifier that I've tried and I've owned and I know the sound of and I'll be talking about mostly because I've not covered that in the channel and I thought it would be useful for a lot of you who are thinking about buying these headphones that I've not reviewed in the past. I hope this was use useful and stay tuned for my next one. Bye-bye.